Junior Investigating Paranormal Society, the first national paranormal organization created and ran by teens. Investigating for over six years, the team gives you a unique perspective on investigating the paranormal. They are now offering courses online or in person on investigating and developing your mediumship skills. For more information, contact John Covey at 540-560-9190 or email them at JIPS. Dot pa at gmail.com. Participants must be 13 or older with parental consent. Welcome to Within the Chaos with your host, Rodney Shortridge, and co host, Robin Dalton. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight, 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 tonight. You can listen in by calling 516-387-1922, or you can go to the Vibe Radio Network website at blogtalkradio.com forward slash Vibe Radio Network. From deep within the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for listening to Within the Chaos. My name is Rodney Shortridge, and I'll be your host tonight, along with my redhead Irish queen, Robin Dalton. Hey, no. Tonight, our special guest is John Edwards. John is the host of Paranormal Sideshow Podcast and has been investigating the paranormal since 1997 with his wife, Stacy. And John is also a sensitive. I have a couple announcements. Uh, Black Diamond Paranormal Society will be at its first annual Bigfoot Conference August 26th and 27th, located at the Hungry Mothers Park in Marion, Virginia. So everyone come out and meet the professional Bigfoot hunters and researchers, along with some amazing exotic animals that will be there for everyone's enjoyment. Also, Black Diamond Paranormal Society, along with the historic Pocahontas, Inc., and the town of Pocahontas will be hosting the fifth Pocahontas Haunted Tours this October 1st. Tours start at 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. Located in Pocahontas, Virginia. This year, we are excited to have the Vibe Radio Network to come down and join us with some of the many talents from the network. More updates as we get closer to the event. So, Robin, how was your week? Just busy, busy with work. That's all. It seems like that's all I've done this week. So, other than that, I've been very uneventful. Thank goodness, really. That's a good thing. (laughs) For you, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Girl out there making them Benjamins. Yeah, more like the Washingtons. (laughs) Hey, you didn't say what kind of job you're doing now, so... (laughs) Actually, I have a very rewarding job. Uh, For people who don't know, I work for a company, Breast Care, who we take care of uh, individuals with mental and physical disabilities. It's very rewarding, and I love what I do. So, you know, I won't complain too much. (laughs) Well, that sounds awesome. I'm sure they appreciate it. I know the families do. Well, some should. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's another show. <laughs> well, I think we go ahead and get this ball started tonight. Uh, it's my honor to welcome our special guest, John Edwards. Uh, hello, John, and thank you for joining us tonight. How are you doing, bud? Hey, I'm doing great. It's nice to hear some uh, friendly southern voices again. Oh, you guys are doing some southern this way. <laughs> <laughs> I've been stuck in Maine now for six months, so it's uh, you know, I, I I'm from right down there in your area, so it's uh, it, it, it's nice to uh, to to hear something familiar. So how many times do people ask you, huh? What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> I have to repeat myself uh, so much on a daily basis, and uh, I, I, it feels like I'm losing a little bit of it, but I'm 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 really trying to hold on to. Uh, to a little bit of my twain. Well, when you come back to visit, I guarantee you, as soon as you start talking, it will come back. <laughs> yeah, it's like riding because a bike. It is. You know, I'm originally from Buckhannon County, and we got a special dialect down there. 
I moved here to Tazewell, you know, 20 some years ago. But as soon as I go to visit family or something, I'm I'm right in there going, yeah, and ass and right and right. Lord, you take him up to some of these events up near where he was raised, and Lord, you can't understand him for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. It's um, I actually called and talked to a family member uh, uh, about a month ago, and it was like I was listening to the Andy Griffith show because I, I, I've been uh, I, I've, I've been up here and, and got so used to hearing lobster and uh, you know uh, just crazy, crazy fast. Um, talk that they don't you know it's just a different speed it's a different it's a different world but but it's beautiful up here so and uh there's a lot of there's a lot of good paranormal i mean it's you know so much history and we've 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 been lucky enough to go to salem and you know um enjoy some of the fun stuff that's up here so but anyway yeah it's not not nothing here you guys what's that that is something i would love to do is go to salem Oh, it's fantastic! It's it's everything. Uh, we actually stayed in the Hawthorne, um, and, and if, if you remember a few years ago, there there was a few. Uh, I think even like uh, Taps did a, did an episode there. Um, but we we got a room the the a room up on the top floor, and um, it, it's the reportedly haunted um, uh, floor, and and just really had to make. Uh, we stayed the night there in Salem in the Hawthorne, and it was. It, it was really nice. It's uh, it, it, when you walk the streets of that town, you can really feel, um, you can really feel the history, and and uh, it, it's you know I liken it to uh, like Savannah. You know, it's one of those just one of the cities you can just feel it all around you. Wow. So uh, how did why and how did you get into paranormal? Well, um, that's an interesting story. Um, really. When when I was younger, um, and I mean very young, uh, there was a lot of strange events happen uh, in my family, um, and, and I only had at best fleeting memories uh, of it, and um, it wasn't really talked about. Um, you know, there there was um, it, it, a lot of uh, uh, being being southern, um, obviously with a big family. There there was always the ghost stories and the um, the legends and the lore that you have in, 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 in the area. And, um, my grandparents had a, um, uh, a hundred and some year old house, a farmhouse. And, um, you know, everybody had seen a lady that had burned up at the stove in, in, in the 1800s. And, um, you know, so that, that was part of my culture, um, you know, at a very young age, but there was also some, um, not as innocent uh, type things that happened with uh, some UFO uh, type. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, basically, a, a UFO event that happened with my mother that she absolutely would not talk about because um, of her beliefs and, and um, just really that's not their style. They don't really get into I- any of the stuff that that I've got into over over the course of my life. And it wasn't until I started really um, traveling and, and doing uh, shows and doing podcasts and things like that that she she came to me after I had a, a, a ufology guy from MUFON on one of my shows, and she listened to the show and 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 she told me about what happened um, when when I was uh, just a toddler, and it, it really filled in some gaps out of my memory. Um, because I had a memory of um, being on my uh, swing set and being lifted into the air, um, and I wasn't scared, but uh, but I remember being lifted into the air and um, something uh, a calming voice telling me uh, everything would be okay. And and honestly, I don't remember everything it told me, and it was just one of those memories that that I had. And I remember trying to tell people that when I was growing up at different times and. No one really put it over, um, and it just it just got into the back burner and became a, a, a sometimes story that you would tell friends, um, you know, about something odd from your childhood that seems like a real memory. But then when my mother finally confided in me a few years ago, she um, really filled in the blanks for me and, you know, told me that um, she was uh, 
with me outside and 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 that she, something came over the house um a ufo then she said there's no real other way of putting it and, she, and it almost pained her to say it that way you you could tell she didn't even want to say the word um but she said it wasn't large um in fact it was kind of uh it was kind of small it looked like something off a 1950s sci-fi movie um you know like a, a, a traditional saucer and um she she said that we lost time, and um, later, after everything happened, we were inside, and I was terrified, and I didn't want to let go of her. And, um, you know, she called uh, my father, and, you know, he asked if she had taken uh, uh, too many volumes, and, uh, you know, the common response. And uh, she she just kept quiet. I mean, she she told some people, but... It was in her best interest, really, to to not say anything. I mean, what do you say? And right. you know, went through all those years, and I really buried that. Um, and and you know, I I honestly kind of uh, w- was a non-believer and 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 became a skeptic. And it wasn't until I was with uh, my 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 wife now, Stacy, and we were dating. It was 1997. And um, she was into all this stuff. I mean, she was into past life regression. She was in college at the time. And she was actually taking classes uh, on on past lives. She was taking classes on on different religions. And, um, you know, so (laughs) oddly enough, I went with her to a New Age bookstore that happened to be in Johnson City, Tennessee. And um, it it was... um, in the backside of a of a building, uh, the, you know, a very little place, and she was in there getting books to interest her, and I, and I got uh, an invoking a demon book because I'm a moron, and um, huh. I thought it was all fun and games and just ha ha, and I was in my early twenties, and later that night I was I was you know I was drinking, I got I got a mirror, I got. Uh, candles, I got everything that it said, and in my biggest carnival barker voice, because um, I've always been somewhat of a ham, I, I went through it and, and, and did the whole thing. And uh, nothing happened, I made fun of it and all this stuff. Well, fast forward a couple of days later, and I was uh, in the kitchen making uh, hamburgers, and she was on the couch, and it was late afternoon in the summer, and she I think she was watching Jeopardy!, um, we were in our early twenties, so there was no air conditioning. We had, the, I had the back door open. The sun was beating in on my face and, um, lo and behold, um, a full size, probably six foot, six foot three black shadow man, um, came right through the back door and it was at a brisk pace, but I mean, I, it was like time stopped. And to this day, I can still see it. And it, it went right through the kitchen. And I heard I, we had one of those old dollar store shades that when you pull them down too far, you have to hand roll them back up from then on. And yeah. um, I, I heard that thing in the other room go, go, go right up. And Stacy kind of let out a, a, a just a, you know, she hollered my name. She was like, John? And um, I, I yelled back, I don't want to talk about it. And we didn't talk about it for a few days until when um, finally she said, you know, you want, do you, you think we should discuss this? And um, I was like, what did you see? And she described the same thing. She said there was a black shadow man, and it ran through the living room between me and the t- television set, and it went out that window, and that shade went up. And we were so, we had shared this experience, and it's something that, you know, as paranormal investigators, you go your whole career trying to capture something like that. And um, it, it was almost like it was supposed to happen. Maybe that I had veered off a course that I was supposed to be on. I don't know. Um, I don't really don't know the reason it happened. Or it may, happen, it may have happened because I was an idiot and, you know, called for it. But that started a um, twofold thing. It started a long uh, journey of us having... Um, infested, you know, infested haunted houses that we were living in. Didn't it, it didn't matter where we moved. We had nonstop activity, and 
it also happened, uh, it started our pursuit. Uh, we started finding, uh, trying to find a team. And when you were trying to find a team in 1997, it was a little bit different than now. You, you, you know, there was maybe one every, you know, 300 miles. And, um, so, so we really, you know, started doing it ourselves, but that's the long answer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, do you have any uh, special skills or talents to help you uh, when you're doing investigations? Well, there again, it's a funny story. <laughs> um, I, um, I, you know, I was on a variety of uh, of teams over the years, especially uh, in the 2000, you know, like 2000 and 2010. Um, I, I, I had a few teams that I started myself, and I was also part of, uh, you know, uh, got I don't know five or six teams, and from Knoxville to you know to up where you guys are, and um, you know we we did some great investigations, and um, you know like Barter Theater, we did um, uh, just just you know houses, a, a lot of back then when when go, when Ghost Hunters first started that paranormal boom, you know everybody and their cousin had a team, and um, so everybody wanted to investigate. You know, so so during that time, there was a lot of self-professed psychics, and um, you know, psychics, sensitives, mediums, whatever. And honestly, I I just crapped on all of it. <laughs> I still retain that that one part of my um, um, skepticism, uh, which I think is healthy to have. And, and you know, one of the teams that I had, it was around two thousand eight. I actually parted with the entire team because of them hugging walls or, you know, feeling the vibes. I can only think of that old Don Knotts movie where, uh, you know, the ghost of Mr. Chicken where all, all the psychics are in front of the house and they're all, you know, screaming and writhing about. Um, but I wanted to be a serious investigator and be, you know, be respected for my work and my theories. Um, that was something I didn't want to happen, but, um, I had a real bad, you know, we, we all have low points in our life, but 2009, I had probably um, about as low as you can get. I had a series of things happen, um, you know, from a, a loss of a, a very dear friend uh, to, uh, uh, you know, trouble with uh, Stacy and I to, um, uh, you know, my job got yanked out from under me that, I, I had, you know, I thought it was going to be my job forever. Uh, just just an, everything that could happen all at once happened. And we did find out, you know, later, um, and that's a whole other story, but um, it, there there was a bit of oppression uh, going on in the house that we were in. And um, long story short, I, I made some really unwise decisions um, and, and – after that happened, um, you know, um, I just, I'll just say that we, I reached a very, very critical low point. Um, after that happened, I, um, I had always had this sort of sixth sense um, on investigation. People used to joke, if you want something to happen, go with John. Um, but after a certain event in 2009, I um, – would be on an investigation and, and I would say, Hey, did you guys hear that? You know, I, I, I so it, I heard it say, uh, yes to that. No, you know, and everybody would be like, no, we didn't hear that. And I would, I would always have the recorder or something. I, I would play it back. And sure enough, there would be a class A EVP saying what I said I heard. So we started doing that all the time. And, and I used to, my partner at the time, Tim Clark, um, you know, he, he would joke that put me out in the middle of a field and I, and I could catch, you know, 40 EVPs. And we would go in a place that, you know, some people would get like three, four um, somewhat, you know, good responses. And I would have literally a whole CD disc full of intelligent Class A responses. Um, it, it was almost something like something triggered in, in, in my head. So um, we uh, – this is this is where it even gets crazier. We went to a place you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with because of where you're at, called Major Grand Mansion. 
Yes. And and um, when we were there, we were there to film a documentary. And um, you know, oddly enough, we gave our documentary to the the Amy Bruni from Ghost Hunters when we were at Scarefest, and uh, they ended up doing an episode there, like very soon thereafter. But we were there doing our documentary, and um, I was I had a lot of very personal experiences in there, um, and, and some of the conversations I had uh, in, in the place were just the, the EVPs were too personal. I'll just put it that way, um, and, and it was it was still continuing where I was hearing things that were captured uh, even on our documentary. There, there's footage on there where. Um, you know, I'm getting angry because no one else hears what I'm hearing, and you can hear it on the videotape that of, of, of the because we had pro cameras with us and an actual production crew, and the production guys were hearing hearing what I was hearing on the boom mics, and um, you know we were at we were actually at Scarefest, and we were set up beside psychic medium Serena Gordon, so for the entire two days that we we were featured there. Um, you know, we were doing, we were giving out uh, our DVDs, our documentaries. We were uh, meeting the people and, 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 you know, everything and sitting at our booth. My my head was just banging with, with this pain. For two days, I couldn't shake this, this headache. So on the third day, Serena had been given readings the, the, the whole weekend, just reading after reading. And, and, you know, I was still on the fence about that stuff and really tried hiding anything that I had happening to me because I'd been so hard on psychics all those years. So, um, I, you know, I, I'm sitting there, and finally Stacy's like, begging. She's like, please, get a reading, get a reading, get a reading. So I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And when I was at Major Graham Mansion, the, the thing that connected to me was the spirit of um, Betty. And um, it was an, uh, a, a spirit named Betty, and I had nonstop EVPs referring to Betty, and um, you know, really got close to that. And so I was sitting there, um, um, you know, I was sitting there getting a reading, and we had seen this lady do do these readings for three days, and they were all calm, they were all cool, no no big deal. So I sit down to get my reading, and I was already kind of tense, you know. I don't, I didn't want someone, you know, prowling around, whatever. And I sit down, and she just flips out. I mean, in the middle of Scarefest, I hear, you know, she starts off normal, and she was like, whoa. And she's like, there, there is something powerful with you. Holy cow. Um, and, and she just keeps going. Well, she describes Major Graham Mansion. And... That was not the DVD we were selling. We weren't. We weren't putting. We were doing a, a Kingsport Grocery Company documentary that aired on local television. We we didn't even have this one out yet, so there was no way for her to know anything about Major Grand Mansion and, and us. So she's describing it. She's describing the old part of the house, the new part of the house, and she was talking about a you know the, the details she shouldn't know, and then she talked about Betty. And she said, she looked at me, and I'll never forget this. She said, she likes you. And she looked over at Stacy, and she goes, but she does not like you. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it still gives me chills. Um, we ended up becoming great friends of Serena, and I thought, you know what would be cool? Let's take her to Major Grand Mansion. So we took her, and she didn't have any idea about anything inside. And she's talking about we were on the ground, and this is cool. If you watch, if you watch the, if you ever get a chance to to see the the documentary we did there, they used to show it on the side during. Um, uh, they would broadcast it on the side of the house during their Halloween event at Major Grand Mansion. It would be on a projector. Um, but uh, Serena was like, you know, something about a blue room. She kept talking about a blue room, and I didn't even know about. It. I wasn't even thinking about a blue room. And she said, there's something about a blue room. Well, we were going up the stairs, and, and we're filming all this. And we end up going into what was the school room. Well, Betty Graham taught school in that school room. And we we got in there, and, and it was just, it was a realization of what, you know, that I had an attachment. And whatever sensitive abilities um, I had, um, Serena said that, 
Betty enjoyed to see me get excited, because I do. When when I ask for a knock and something knocks right beside me, I just I, I get pretty excited. And, and, and Serena and many other psychics have all said, you know, some of us are lights. And, and it's easier for the spirits to see certain people. Um, and, and that's really, you know, I, that was really the, the the beginning of it. And um, I still try not to use that for investigation purposes just because I, want, I still want to let research do its job. But, um, you know, it, it does help. <laughs> I won't lie. Uh, as far as evidence, sometimes I don't know if it's the attachment that I'm getting every time or if, you know, a house is really haunted. Um, so it, it's it, it's still a work in progress, um, but I, I do get a lot of information, and and it, it's you know I don't ever see myself uh, you know as that way. I, I don't know. I, I, it's something that that for me is still hard to explain, and it's hard to understand. But it but it it has become part of the investigation, and I think all of us that do this, all of us that do investigations. It's just like playing baseball or shooting basketball. The more you do it, the better you are, the more in tune you are at at what you're doing. And I think it's impossible to go through, you know, investigations for years and put yourself into the paranormal field without becoming somewhat in tune. Yeah, that's true. So do you have any preference on – what type of properties do you investigate? Do you prefer residential or commercial, or do you not have one? You know, preference. I I, I prefer residential. Um, I you know I have a saying for I, I love Waverly Hills. I, I love Tina. Um, I've had some of my best times there, and um, I you know I call them paper booze um, because um, you know my my theory there is is we have no idea what we're doing. Um, we, we started, you know, charging money 10 years ago for people to go through prisons and, uh, or, you know, Waverly Hills uh, or old mental hospitals. And so every night in the year, 365 days a year, you've got, you know, an eclectic group of, uh, of people, um, you know, going through and God knows what they're asking for or what they're doing, but what they, what they all are doing is pouring their energy into these places. So, you know, I, I think every year that I've went to made, uh, to uh, Waverly Hills, Waverly, Waverly Hills got darker and it got worse. Uh, from the first time I went there to, to, to the last time I went there, I mean, it, it went from one type of, you know, a few ghosts walking around with, you know, gowns on, um, you know, and, 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 sweet things like like the children you know maybe touching your hand or something and experiences like that to dark experiences of of you know black shadow things crawling on the ceiling and and doppelgangers and and i really think that we have no idea the dangers that we could be doing by allowing people or sending people in these places and these big major haunts that people see on tv um right. every night every night of the year you know so uh, yeah, I, I prefer going in somebody's house. That's a good point of view. I haven't heard anyone put it like that before, but you know, it really does make a lot of sense. So yeah, I, you... I just think we don't know yet. You know, I, I think the jury's still out on on what it's going to look like in five or ten more years. Right. So what all documentaries have you done? I mean, I know you did the one on Major Graham, and that other one. Uh, how many all together have you done? Well, the the funny thing is, we, we've we've probably uh, I, and, and when I say documentaries, it, it's full production. It, it's with studios. Um, you know, uh, the the first one we did was actually a pilot um, that we filmed uh, to you know try to put it on a network somewhere, and um, we 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 showed it locally in the Tri Cities as a Halloween special one year. Um, but we we filmed in theaters, uh, a bunch of theaters, because that's the, you know if I have my true favorite place, I guess it would actually be theaters, because we've done um, you know movie theaters and, and just you know like the Kentucky State Theater and like I said uh, I mentioned earlier Barter Theater and the Johnson City Community Theater. Um, it just there's a lot of energy around those places, um, right. you know. And uh, but we we filmed there we and. 
some of them uh, have never seen a lot of day uh, just because that's, you know, that's the business. You, you, you film all this stuff, and, you know, we've uh, sometimes it's just, uh, I know we did um, Tri-City uh, 7 Cinema in Blountville, Tennessee. Um, that place is one of the most haunted places you'll ever go in your life. Since you guys are close to there, um, that it, it would be worth the journey to go go see a movie in, in, in Cinema 7. <laughs> um, so there was a guy that died in that in that theater, and, and it's ridiculously haunted. But, um, you know, we did one there, and we had, I think we had um, five camera guys with, with big rigs, and uh, we had people holding boom mics, and, and it was just too much. Um, so... I scaled down from that production, and, and if I if I'm filming something, I like to do it now with, you know, maybe two camera guys, or or, or maybe just the team holding the cameras, you know, and um, just because you you can really do overkill on on, on how much you have in there. But um, we we worked with a couple of different places, and and you know, I I like I like doing it in a documentary style because I don't believe that going into a place one night you're ever going to have that's not a real investigation i, I for me uh, an investigation is a pen and paper and you know you visit a, a location several times over a course of weeks maybe months to to really learn um what's going on there and, and when i go into an investigation i ask the client if they're okay with that you know if you really want to know what's going on we're going to have to interview. We're going to have to do research on the property. We're going to have to, um, you know, spend some real quality time in here. It doesn't have to be at the stroke of 3 a.m. You know, I've had just as much activity at 3 in the afternoon. It's just um, really doing a true investigation. Right. Well, what made you decide to set up a website uh, called hauntedsouthtv.com and launch a podcast called Haunted South Paranormal Podcast? Well, um, our our friend um, with Elixir Media, um, his name is Wes Leonard, and um, back in 2000, I think, they had, he he started um, a Haunted South TV, and they did like Sense of Tunnel, and, and I don't know, had like hundreds of thousands of views and hits and everything, so I had met with him to have the the show that I had at the time in mind um, to to make it in, um, in, in, into a TV show, and um, I, he was the one that pitched Haunted South TV to me because that was a name he had already had, and he wanted to maybe resurrect that name. Um, he knew me from local pro wrestling, um, which I was doing at the time, and I was a uh, on TV every Saturday, you know, being the bad guy heel. Um, and um, he filmed for us. So it, it was his it was his brainchild. And, um, you know, he wanted to – he talked me into it. I didn't want to use a name that I didn't come up with. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, it, it, he – and he was right. We um, – you know, that was a really popular um, – a really popular show. At the time, there wasn't a lot of people that had apps. And, you know, he, he's a web designer, so he – had the TV show, uh, he had the website, and he, and he built us an app for Android and iPhone that was pretty awesome, and uh, built us a podcast studio um, there at their at their TV studios for the local Kingsport channel, and um, you know so we were a little bit ahead of the curve on that, and um, you know we we had a, we had a really nice little run there. It was um, um, it, it was it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. So. Uh... I understand you got the uh, uh, you've launched the third side. Can you tell everyone a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, if you ever want to laugh, uh, one of the things that we found out when we were doing our show <laughs> is um, we we would have our you know you know you guys know how it is. You have your you come on and maybe ask each other about the week and um, you know we did that and we went into the paranormal news and Stacy really that's that's her. Um, that's her thing. She she goes on there and gets the stories that are making the waves, and um, she tries to read them uh, to the best of her ability. <laughs> but I had this this bad knack of uh, jumping in and you know being a smart aleck or um, you know saying something funny and uh, 
drawn it off track or whatever. Well, it ended, it ended up that got kind of popular, and some of the people that listened to the show really liked that aspect of it. So one of those people who listened to the show, and, and oddly enough, was someone we had investigated his house before, also had a studio. And um, he got with us, and, and it was like, you know, I'd really like you guys to come here and, and promote my place and, um, you know, be in our studio. It was Avon Studios. And um, so so we did, and he built us a, a studio for a YouTube show with, uh, and I wanted it to look like a 1950s, 1960s, like South, you know, like Elvira, Mistress of the Dark Studio with cheesy bats hanging on strings and, um, you know, just like if you were hosting a um, a cable access uh, horror show. And um, so, so they built that for us, and, and we really went with the tongue-in-cheek kind of um, – whole lot of comedy. I mean, we still had really good guests. We had like the Nick Redferns and John Tenney and, um, you know, all those top folks. But at the same time, the, the nucleus of the show was um, us putting the, the the news story. So, yeah, it's still it's on YouTube. You just look up Third Side Paranormal. And um, we just wanted it to be something free and fun for everyone. And, and um, you know, we, we had a blast doing it because um, luckily Stacy and I have a pretty good chemistry with each other. But, it's really just the same conversations we have sitting around on the couch because a whole lot of weird seems to uh, follow us <laughs> daily. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And, and um, you know, for it to be able to do a show that you go back and watch and, and you actually have to pause it because you're laughing so hard, um, it, it's, it's a pretty good thing. I, I enjoy doing it. Well, yeah, everybody likes to laugh. <laughs> That's why yeah. we got Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> there you there you go. <laughs> well, I know you work with you twice. <laughs> and, but do you all have uh, and I know you work with, you know, camera guys and whatever when you do your documentaries and such. Do you have other investigators that help you when you go out on investigations? Well, no, we, we started a thing. Um the shows that we've done since Haunted South have it taken off quite like Haunted South did. Um, only because, well, there's a few reasons. I mean, there wasn't as many people, um, is one thing, but, uh, working with a web designer that, that knows how to mess with Google, uh, mm-hmm. our, our web searches were way, way up there. Um, and, um, you know, our, our podcast at one point was, was, uh, getting about a hundred thousand downloads a week. And, um, which, you know, that's pretty big, pretty significant. Um, and, um, from 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 doing that, you know, when we went to these, when, when we went to the the other ones, um, we decided that we wanted to feature real teams, and um, not always have your paranormal celebrities on. Um, right. So so we started um, we started just just requesting you know real boots on the ground people, uh, everyday people to come on and, and talk to us about you know what's happening down the street, what what's you know, uh, it doesn't always have to be a, a big event or a TV show, you know, that everybody has a ghost story. So, um, you know, we started we started doing that, and um, um, it, it, it really transitioned um, uh, quite easily into, um, oh, my God. I am, I am so sorry. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought because I was sitting here talking to you, and um, so I, I just uh, had a, I had some paper in front of me, and it it just completely moved about an inch. So um, I, I don't know if I'm talking about something I shouldn't be talking about, or <laughs> oh, oh no, yeah that that was uh, I don't usually get thrown off track like that. Well, it happens. <laughs> well, do you uh, have any? Oh yeah, I absolutely do. Um, other than the one that just happened, and, and let me finish your question for you. Um, like I said, I don't usually get I don't usually get thrown off track like that, but that was pretty fun. Um, the um, we we decided to not have teams anymore, and um, and 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 I'll answer your other question, but. Um, Going back to the previous one, if I don't get interrupted this time by um, a notebook that likes to move, um, 
the uh yeah, I mean I'm telling you guys, that just that just blew me away. That's um anyway. Um so we decided to not have a team per se. Um we started embedding ourselves with other teams and people that listened to the show, people that friends that we had made through the years um from doing the show. Uh, you know, we we went out with them, um, and and you know we that way we like to travel. So if you had a team in Pennsylvania or you have a team in Maine or wherever you have a team, uh, if we can get there, we'll do it. And uh, you know, learn we'll learn from you. You can learn from us. And we've done a lot of lectures. Uh, we we you know we've done events at schools. And and spoke you know uh, about many theories on the paranormal and and personal experiences, um, but but that was the team question. And um, like I said, I'm sorry about getting freaked out there for a second. But um, as far as per- <laughs> as far as personal experiences, um, I've I've got a couple of humdingers um, that you know to this day are. Um, very um well they're they're a little bit outside the uh the norm but but you know hey they're they're within the chaos if you will um <laughs> I, one one in particular i had um we have a little girl she's nine years old her name's ariana and um we uh i was we we lived in a house in in, in uh, it was right on the outskirts of the Cherokee National Forest um, in, uh, in Elizabeth in Ham- Hampton, Tennessee. White House, that's an important thing to remember. It was a white house. Um, but we had so many experiences in that house, and that house is really where things went dark. Um, you know, I married my best friend. We we have a, a, a great relationship. We don't fight. We, we, you know, we, uh, we're blessed in the fact that, that we have a lot of fun with each other. But in that house, things started going bad. And that's, that's, that's the house I was in when I told you that everything went dark for me in 2009. Um, it, I would not investigate. I have a rule against investigating places I live in just because, you know, who the hell wants to do that? Cause you drum up stuff and it's kind of hard to sleep. Um, but this this house just I mean it, there was so much stuff happened and not just regular stuff I, I'm talking about mood changes I'm talking about people being completely different than what they were including myself and um, I started drinking heavy um, you know and, and this is the reason that I'm sober today I, you know I haven't drank in six years um, but a lot of dark things happened in that house and I'll tell you the personal experience. Uh, as, that one of the ones that happened in that house, and then um, tell you what you know. Go back to the reason I, I mentioned Ariana. Um, in that house one morning, I was um, I, I was laying down in bed, and I, I was uh, babysitting Ariana while Stacy was at, at work. I think she worked at a bank at the time, and um, I was just chilling out, you know, nothing uh, nothing out of the out of the ordinary, and all of a sudden, I, I, I started hearing someone banging on the front door. And I don't mean normal banging. I mean, they were just killing it. They were just, just beating it in. And I, um, I'm i a pretty big dude. I mean, I was a, you know, I was a pro wrestler. I was, you know, I, I was in a, another job where I, I had to fight daily. Um, so, and it's just saying, I, I'm not, I'm not normally skittish or scared of, of, of humans. Um, you know, but I, I ran and I looked out the front window and I just felt this overwhelming fear. And at the, at the front door, there was a couple and and to describe them, it was blank. Like they, their eyes were like blank. It was like, there was nothing, nothing inside their eyes. And they, they were, they were laughing and I mean, they weren't kids either. They were, they were, they looked like they were in the, their twenties or thirties, but they were almost not dressed right. It looked like they were more dressed from the seventies, and and they just kept beating on the door, laughing, cackling. And they weren't beating on the door and running away. 
they they were they were I really thought they were going to break in the door and for me this couple would be there there would be no reason I wouldn't open that door and punch that dude in the face it's just I I was terrified and I I went from one window to another and and when I went to the other window it just sort of stopped and and, and they were gone there was nothing there. I, I don't know to this day what what happened, but all I know is it was one of the scariest, most surreal moments of my life. And about a week later, I was um, – Ariana was just a baby, and, and a lot of times I would just lay down on the floor where she was playing if she fell asleep, like a lot of parents know, and I would just crash when I could. And um, I, I laid down to sleep. Uh, beside her and take a nap and it was uh, it was like 11 in the morning at the time I worked at night and um, I woke up and I could see Ariana and she was beside me and her face was facing mine we were in the living room floor and I was completely paralyzed I couldn't move I couldn't move my head and there was this dark demonic voice I can't tell you, just like the other story, I can't tell you what it said to me because I don't know. All I know is it was saying, I remember it saying something to me, and it was in the worst voice, like you had a voice changer um, that that you could imagine. And I wanted to move so bad because I wanted to make sure my baby was okay. And I could not move. And after a, a couple of minutes, I was fine. It's not like I went back to sleep or something like that. And I know about sleep paralysis and, and all that good stuff. I know about all the all the answers that a skeptic's going to give you. But I also know that whatever happened to me was real. And we left that house. After, uh, after everything and after the trouble, we decided, you know what, we're selling this freaking house, and hey, we're going to another city. And... Uh, we were we had loaded up the van and it was, it was almost like a movie. I can't I couldn't write this any better. We loaded up the rider truck and my little baby girl was sitting beside me in the truck and we were all happy to leave and she looks up at me and she says, "Daddy, I never want to go back in the black house." Wow. And it was it was like Stacy was like, "Honey, the, that's a white house." And we just left it. We didn't say anything, you know. So we've always referred to that place as the Black House um, because of that. And we actually, I actually did take a team in there while the place was vacant. And oddly enough, the, the they were building a road through there, and we sold that house to the state. And the state ended up tearing the house down, thank God. But we investigated that with a team, and we saw some crazy stuff. Like when we went back in that house, um, there was uh, these windows that were just sealed because we had a heat pump, and one of those just it, it broke the seal and flew right open by itself in front of like five witnesses. Um, so I mean, there, there was a lot of crap that happened in there, and it was dark. Um, they, you know, one of my buddies captured a full body apparition on camera um, in there after we had already moved out. But yeah, the 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 black house would probably be that's probably my one of my biggest personal experiences. That that I've had. The Amityville house. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was like the redneck Amityville. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I understand you're writing your first book. How's that coming along? And uh, can you talk about it? Yeah, absolutely. I. The funny thing is, it reminds me of there was a Family Guy episode where um, where Brian and Stewie are sitting on the couch, and uh, Stewie's like, "How's that book coming along, Brian?" Oh um, yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of like a lot of our um a, you know a lot of our listeners I can only imagine that they're kind of like wanting to call me up and go you know so you got a protagonist you got an antagonist um the um I I've been writing the book since uh 2010 I've got a lot to write about I was like I said I was a pro wrestler Um, I was a pro wrestling manager. I I was on over 200 episodes of local television. And, um, you know, uh, I I was in a freaking metal band. And and the whole time I've had a professional career that um, I hide all all this stuff from the people that I I do in my professional career. But, you know, and with the paranormal. But the book itself is 
I, I went back and forth on, on, on what I was writing on, and, and I've really just stuck to our story. Um, I was talking to David Weatherly, and um, um, the, who did the, the, you know, the Black Eyed Kids book. And, um, and he, he's like, you know what, you really need to tell your story. So, I, you know, I, I, that really just kind of prompted me to, to instead of uh, doing a book on theories, which I was doing, um, I, I decided, you know what, I, I, I'll include some of those theories that I have in there, but I'm really just going to tell about Stacy and, and, and my journey. And, um, you know, so it starts out in 97 with, with what I told you, and it really goes through some of the, some of the, just the personal journey that we've taken and um because th- there's a whole lot more to it and um and, and being able to look you know back um uh, hindsight's always 2020 you can really see you know um so many times when 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 you're having trouble or or you're having you're down um you know there there's other factors at play there and and i try to keep a real positive attitude these days and, and not let those top things get in my way but I, i've been writing the book and and for the most part, I could put this book out right now, but I, I, there's something telling me that I really need to uh, to, to to wait just a, a, a little bit longer. I, I I put a deadline on myself for um, the middle of 2017, and um, I, I just feel like there's there's a chapter that that's still waiting to come. But yeah, it's 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 ready, and um, I, I fully intend on, on on putting it out there and and. Um, you know, I hope that it helps other people that that may be experiencing some severe hauntings and uh, or even um, troubles in their lives, troubles in their marriage, to, to maybe look at other places and um, for for what what could be causing that. You know, um, when when you otherwise get along with people and then you, you start feeling alone and you start feeling um, you know different, that there could be other causes for it, especially if you do what we do. Exactly, and that's what, very important for people to know. Yeah, it's um, you know I'm going to include, like I said, I'm going to include some some of the the more popular um, things that I've learned through through doing the paranormal. Um, I you know my 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 favorite theory probably uh, just to throw at you real quick is uh, something I call the keeper. Um, I was doing an investigation at the theater I mentioned. And one of the EVPs, I said, who's going to keep me? You know, why Why are you not talking to me? Because anybody who's been on, a, on an investigation knows sometimes you're, you're getting all this activity. You're, your EMF's going crazy. You're getting knocks. You're getting EVPs. And then everything just shuts up. Everything just stops. And, you know, some people say that's energy or, uh, you know, there's some reason for that. And I got this EVP years ago. And the and the EVP said, um, the keeper will. Uh, when I asked, you know, who, who's gonna who's gonna keep me from talking to you, and and the, you know, just the name, the keeper, is, is almost like a book title itself. It's almost kind of you know ominous. So I, I really put some stuff together, and I started noticing that when I went to these bigger buildings, when I went to like a Waverly Hills, or I went to an old abandoned hospital. That's when I notice this the most. Sometimes I'm getting this activity, and then this activity just stops, almost like there's one dark spirit, or 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 one um, gatekeeper, or one or one warden of the of the place that that keeps all the other ghosts um, in the place, or keeps them in line. And this got reaffirmed when I went to Waverly Hills. I was talking to Tina Matherly. And she was like, let me show you something. So she showed me their front gate and their security camera footage. And there was this white orb going toward the gate. It gets to the gate, and it, all, it looks like it becomes a full-body apparition at the gate. But then there was another orb, and it was darker, and it just zooms in from nowhere. And that, it, 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 it looks like it chased the other orb back into the facility. And, you know, I, that was something that got my mind going, you know, like these people that were on death's, on death's doorstep, you know, what kind of deals are they making for five more minutes of life, you know? And, and 
um, it, that got me thinking about the, the, the keeper theory. And I, I really firmly believe, especially in these large buildings, that sometimes there is a darker or, or a malevolent ghost that keeps the other ones, in, in, you know, from talking or keeps them from communicating to the best of its ability. Yeah, that makes a lot. Yeah, it's just something if you notice it from, you know, from here on out, it's um, it, 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 you usually will contact one particular spirit in a place. And, you know, and it does seem like the a lot of the meeker ones will say, help me, or, you know, uh, you get so many of those. But then you get the one mean one that says, get out. You know, and and, and to me, I, I really feel like, just like, you know, you put a bunch of, uh, you know, living people in, in a room, but there's going to be one that steps up. And, and I really feel like on the spiritual plane that in a lot of these bigger facilities, it, that, that that's just what I call the keeper. But just thought I'd throw that in there. That's 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 part of what I explore in the book. Well, where do you think the paranormal world is heading? <laughs> Off a cliff, really quickly. No, um, it, I, I, um, I like. You see, you hear a lot about paranormal unity, and that's a buzzword these days. Uh, if you get on the internet, that's something you see all the time. Um, we really tried, um, you know, starting that and, and making sure people shared thoughts. We even started something called the EVP project that unfortunately never got off the ground where people shared, you know, where they were at at a certain place. And if, and if they called an EVP, they could share it. Maybe it's the same spirit. Maybe it's the same time. I think we're really, um, you know, we're heading toward uh, – we, we've been in this boom period for a while, and, and I think to progress forward, we're going to have to stop worrying about vanity and who has the biggest team or who has the, you know, the best acronym <laughs> for for their team and um, really work together um, share and, and share ideas and, and, and share, you know, share thoughts. I, I, I hope that we're going in that direction because, I see more and more people tired of, of drama and, and, and tired of, you know, the sea level paranormal celebrities, you know, um, I, I hope that we get closer to worrying about what's really important. And that's answering the questions for people like me that was 22 years old, scared out of my wits, not understanding why my whole paradigm had shifted. Um, you know, it, it, I I want to get to a, a point where we get back to the 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 fact that we're all working together toward the same goal, of trying to figure out what comes next. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're we're running a little bit on time. We got about two minutes left. So, uh, uh, John, I, I do appreciate you coming on the show. It, it, do you have any special projects or events or any way people can get in contact with you, real quick? Absolutely, man. You only have to ask me once to shill a little bit. Um, <laughs> the um, ParanormalSideShow.com, that's our new project. And um, hopefully that's going to be, uh, you know, uh, the, the one that that, that we, we stay with from here on out. Um, it, we, we finally took the reins ourselves. And, and, you know, my lovely wife, Stacy, is um, she's doing the website. She's doing She's doing all the work on this all the production and um paranormal sideshow dot com is, is the work of our hearts. Um it, it's 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 we're the ones in charge this time. So if you go to paranormal sideshow dot com it'll tell you all the information. Uh Facebook dot com slash paranormal sideshow, Twitter at sideshow ninety seven. I wanted to do your show first before I did the initial paranormal sideshow um episode and that will be on Monday. So, um, you know, we're going to um, be be doing it weekly and um, we'll be available on iTunes and we'll be launching our new app on Halloween. So whether you have an Android or whether you have a, an iPhone, um, you'll be able to get our new uh, Paranormal Sideshow app starting on Halloween. Awesome. Well, John, I do appreciate you coming on the show, bud. Now, I have enjoyed hey, it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. It was so nice talking to you. Same here. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great one. Hey, you too. 
Well, that's it for us tonight. I want to thank John Edwards for coming on the show and to thank everyone who took the time to listen in. I'd like to give a big shout out to the Vibe Radio Network. Also to all the first responders and our men and women in the armed services. Thank you for your service. Turn in, uh, turn, turn, shit. Turn in next week, August 25th. Our special guest will be C.C. Clevenger, leader of Black Diamond Paranormal Society, Abden, Virginia chapter, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, be safe and have a good night, and hopefully I can talk next time. Night, y'all. Everybody have a good one. Be safe. Duralast batteries are proven tough in the most extreme conditions. They're tested to start in 140 degree heat or temperatures of 40 below. Yep, they're that tough. So if they can do that, they can definitely perform for your nephew's soccer game. Work through a scattered thunderstorm or be dependable on Sunday afternoon trips to the grocery store. Because no matter what the weather's like, it's nice to know that you've got a proven tough Duralast battery under the hood. Duralast, proven tough and sold only at AutoZone. Hoods up, America. Get in the zone, AutoZone.